Last up then is to look at actual blood in hemoglobin. And it might be a little hard to see, but again, as I said before, but again, as I said before, this last pad on the strip is used to read off either blood or hemoglobin. And the way I like to think about this is if blood actually strikes this pad, a whole blood cell, it's kind of like a paintball hitting this pad. And so you'll see specks of positive color change. If that blood cell is already lysed way before it got into the urine or in the urine itself, then it's dispersed that hemoglobin throughout the urine. And so you'll see more of a uniform color. So if there's spots, it means there's blood. If it's a uniform, it means there's hemoglobin. In cases of the presence of blood, the two simplest interpretations, and I'll just cover the two simplest interpretations, is that the blood passed through the glomerular filtration membrane, even though it's not supposed to. And that's called glomerular hematuria. Or the blood actually passed into the ureters, the bladder, or the urethra. And that's called urologic hematuria. Now in glomerular hematuria, that's usually associated with significant protein as well, because if this filtration membrane is filtering everything smaller than protein, and now it's letting blood through, it's probably also letting protein through. So if there's significant protein, there's also red blood cells found in the urine, then that indicates that there's a problem with the glomerular filtration membrane. If there's not a positive protein, then that often indicates that the blood is entering later, and that would mean something like a UTI or something is causing blood to enter post glomerular filtration membrane. Again, that could be like a kidney stone, things like that. So if there is blood in the urine, but there's not protein, it probably means that protein entered later, especially if, and this could indicate UTI, especially if again, there's a high nitrates and maybe a basic pH also to indicate, or leukocytes also to indicate a urinary tract infection. Occasionally in long distance runners, also blood is forced through the glomerular filtration membrane and that's considered benign. The presence of hemoglobin would indicate that red blood cells have been lysed and that can occur in diseases that cause red blood cells to lyse like anemia or sepsis. The hemoglobin is likely associated with an elevation also in urobilinogen in that case. And so if there's an elevation in urobilinogen, there's also hemoglobin that would indicate that something is causing red blood cells to lyse. Let's try and go through a couple of these. And uh, admittedly, I've kind of doctored these, and so they might not be real, real clear. But this first one has a very low specific gravity. It also has glucose present, if we line that up. It has glucose present, and it also has ketones present. So if there's glucose, ketones, and a low specific gravity, this is a pretty good indication of diabetes mellitus. Now if we took that same strip and we added blood, often in diabetes there's a kidney damage, and that can actually lead to blood in the urine. And that's a problem in late stage diabetes. In this stick, there's high bilirubin and low urobilinogen. There should be urobilinogen on the stick, and its absence suggests an inability to get conjugated bilirubin into the gut. The increase in bilirubin confirms this, and so this is a test that's positive for biliary obstruction. In this stick, there's high urobilinogen, and there's also a hemoglobin. So high urobilinogen, there's also a hemoglobin. So there's not a punctate or spotted pattern, it's more of a uniform color. If there is also higher bilirubin, this could indicate liver disease, but since there's not an elevation in bilirubin, this suggests it's hemolysis, especially since there's hemoglobin in the urine. In this cell, I've got protein present, glucose present, and I've also got spots of positive on the blood pad, so that means it's blood and not hemoglobin. This is a pretty good sign of hypertension or preeclampsia. If there is a really, really high blood pressure, you can push protein through the filtration membrane, and you can also push blood through the filtration membrane. Also, you might be pushing fluid through so, through so fast that you can't pick the glucose back up, and so that would result in glucose in the urine. So this would be an indication of really, really high blood pressure, just in hypertension, or could also be preeclampsia. In this one, I'm trying to indicate dehydration. So there's a really high specific gravity. 
There's also leukocytes present. And that could indicate any kind of infection that's causing diarrhea or some kind of, or throwing up. So it's causing dehydration and there's clearly also an infection. And this one I'm trying to show a basic pH, presence of leukocytes, and also presence of blood. Now the high pH is from bacteria that break down the urea, a normally acidic component of urine, and if that's broken down, then the pH of the, of the urine becomes basic. Leukocytes could also put nitrites if I wanted to make this a little bit more clear, but also blood. Nitrites is not necessarily always positive in a UTI, so that's why I left it blank. But having these three indicates a UTI, a high pH, the presence of leukocytes, and whole blood. And again, since there's not protein present, it indicates that this blood entered post-glomerular filtration membrane. Oh, the last strip I have, I'm trying to just color in that this is not a low pH. This high bilirubin would indicate acute liver disease. All right, I hope that is kind of a nice basic introduction to what we're looking at. What are the different tests? What can they indicate on their own? And then what can the combination of the different tests indicate as well? Thank you.